In order to execute a specific task, the corresponding program is kept in the main memory and the processor executes it by fetching individual instructions into the processor. And for the processor to fetch and execute the instructions, the basic components required within the processor are the register, a control unit and an arithmetic and logic unit. These individual components are interconnected using an internal processor bus. There are different kinds of organization. We will discuss one simple one with a single internal processor bus. This single internal processor bus connects the various components of the processor and this entire processor system communicates with the external bus using two registers called memory address register and memory data register. Memory address register communicates with the external address bus and the memory data register communicates with the external data bus. Data can be transferred to or from the processor but address is always transferred from the processor. Now we have our program in the main memory. A specific program is made to be executed by making one register called program counter point to the first instruction within that program. So we need one register called program counter within the processor to track the program. Now we have the address of the first instruction of the program to be executed within the program counter. And that instruction has to be fetched to the processor. In order to fetch that instruction to the processor, its address which is in the program counter should be kept on the external address bus. But the processor system communicates with the external address bus using memory address register. Thus, the address from the program counter will be transferred to the memory address register and from there to the external address bus. Now the control unit of the processor which communicates with the external control bus keeps a read signal on the external control bus and we have the address on the address bus. Hence the data corresponding to that address which is the first instruction of the program will be read from the memory to the external data bus. And the external data bus communicates with the processor using memory data register. Thus the instruction will be transferred to the memory data register. And from the memory data register it will be fetched to the instruction register. So finally instruction is fetched to the processor and kept in the instruction register. Now the instruction fetch phase is over. No instruction has to be decoded. For that instruction from the instruction register will be directly fed to the control unit to get decoded. The instruction decoder and control unit decode that instruction to identify what all operations are required for that instruction and whether any data are required for it. Some of the data or operands required for that instruction may already be present in the processor in its general purpose registers. And sometimes some operands have to be fetched from the memory too. For example, let the instruction be add location a comma r0 in order to add the content of register r0 with the content of the memory location a and to keep the result in general purpose register r0. So here one of the operand is already present in the processor. The other operand has to be fetched from the memory. So to fetch that operand from the memory, its address should be kept on the external address bus. But the processor system communicates with the external address bus using memory address register. So the address of the operand will be transferred to the memory address register and from there it will be kept on the external address bus. The control unit keeps a read signal on the external control bus. Hence the data corresponding to memory location A will be read from the memory to the external data bus and the external data bus communicates with the processing system using memory data register thus the operand will be transferred to the memory data register. 
So we got both the operands within the processor and while decoding the instruction the control unit realizes that this instruction intends to perform the add operation. Hence we need the help of arithmetic and logic unit. Both the operands can be fed to the arithmetic and logic unit. Now ALU makes use of some temporary registers such as temp, y and z in order to perform its operations. Also ALU is used to perform not only the operations on the data but also used to perform the increment operation on the program counter. We know that the register program counter in the processor keeps track of the program by pointing to the next instruction to be executed. So by the time one instruction is fetched and kept in the instruction register, the content of the program counter will be incremented by the size of the instruction. So if ALU is performing the increment operation on the program counter, one of the operands of the ALU should be the address in the program counter and the other operand should be the value 4 assuming that the size of each instruction is 4 bytes. Else if ALU is performing some other operations on the data such as add operation, instead of 4 it should select the register Y, the temporary register Y as the other operand. The first operand will be A itself. It can be the content of some temporary general purpose register or the content of some memory location. But the operand B should be the content of the temporary register Y. So for program counter increment operation we should select 4. Otherwise we should select register Y. This is made possible by using a multiplexer to select either 4 or the register content Y based on the proper selection signal from the control unit. So here let operand A be the content of the general purpose register R0 and let operand B be the content of the memory location A which will be transferred to the register Y and from there it is selected by the multiplexer and is fed to the ALU as operand B. Now both the operands are added and the result will be kept on the temporary register Y. From there it will be transferred to the general purpose register R0. So the instruction is fetched, decoded and executed and by that time the content of program counter is incremented. Hence the next instruction whose address is now in the program counter can be fetched, decoded and executed. Here we can see the execution of this one instruction add location a comma r0 at the lowermost level is actually a series of data transfers between the registers or between the registers and ALU. For example, here address is transferred from program counter to memory address register. Then instruction is transferred from memory data register to instruction register. Content of R0 is transferred to ALU. Content of memory location A is transferred from memory data register to ALU. Result is transferred from ALU to Z register. Then from Z register to register R0. So these are a series of register level data transfers. Not only this instruction, every instruction at the lowermost level is actually a series of register level data transfers which should be done in an ordered and timely manner and that ordering and timing is ensured by the control unit by producing the necessary control signals. So the registers ALU and the internal processor bus should be interconnected to set up a proper data path for the series of data transfers at register levels involved in every instruction supported by the system. So we can say CPU is having a data path involving the register ALU and the internal processor bus and a separate control path, a data path for the movement of the data and a control path to control the movement of data within the processor and also to and from the processor. 
and the internal organization of the processor or the interconnection of the components of the processor should be such that it should be able to set up a proper data path for every possible data movement in every instruction supported by the system. So this is one such simple data path architecture here we can see for this instruction for every data movement there is a path set up. According to this type of interconnection there is a path from the program counter to memory address register from memory data register to instruction register and so on. Similarly for every instruction supported by this system this data path should be set up according to this interconnection.